and welcome to So You Think You're Awake, the show about life transformation through dream interpretation. I'm Michael Sheridan. On this show, through analyzing your dreams, I reveal your potential and the obstacles you need to overcome. I'm very specific. I tell you the magic power you have, what makes you magnificent, and the bumps in life that are holding you back. These bumps are not in the way, they are the way. To get your dream analyzed on my show, go to dream-analysis.com, fill in the form, and send it in from there. That's it. That's all you do. And I take it from there. And you just sit back and listen to the radio and have your dream analyzed. And thank you to everybody who does does send in dreams. They are the lifeblood of the show and I couldn't do the show without them. Thank you for that. Um, so I have uh, the first few dreams that I have just coincidentally happen to be about channeling. And so I thought, you know, that's the first part of my new course. I've moved it out a week because of um, delays with getting the final version of the last video back in my video in my launch series uh, and it's the best one it's it's the one that's all about dreams um and so i haven't got that yet i think i expect to get it today so if you're on my list you're going to get it uh, sent out to you tomorrow um great feedback from all of those and thank you for that feedback uh so anyway it's been put off for a week it's not going to start this sunday it'll start the following sunday which is the 21st which is solstice which is amazing and i only discovered that when i was talking to jackie campbell earlier um, I wanted to get her in because of the first few dreams and the fact that the first part of the course is all about learning how to channel. Um, and it's an essential skill that when you work out a dream, when you want to work out a dream, you know, there's a lot of information around uh, figuring it out. But how do you know that you've actually got it right when you put all the symbols together? Uh, because, you know, somebody could have their own personal association with a symbol. Paris could mean something to you and a completely different thing to me. How do we know that we've got the dream interpreted correctly? And the answer is by knowing how to channel and using that skill to confirm that you got the analysis correct. Uh, and, and it's fantastic. Once you can do that, it's fantastic. And in fact, a lot of people who listen to this show have gone off and learned how to channel from other people um, because, you know, I... I talk about it all the time. But anyway, here we have Jackie talking about uh, what she's going to do in the first part of the course, the first uh, uh, 10 weeks or so. Jackie, thanks for joining me. Uh, I, uh, I wanted to get a brief overview of uh, what you're going to be doing for people on the course, because part of what you're going to answer now and say now is also going to be useful for people. Like um, the first three weeks, three weeks are all about raising your vibration and clearing yourself, getting yourself uh, into an energetic space where you're, everything's good, you're gonna connect with your guides. Uh, basically, you're gonna go where you intend to go uh, to get answers from who you hope to get answers from. Why is raising your vibration so important? And why would it take three weeks to learn it? Actually, anybody who's in the know would go, well, actually three weeks is really cool, <laughs> but. I, uh, well, it's interesting because um, in my shamanic training, it was the entire first year of training that we learned how to really um, clear a space, hold a space, clear our connection, um, have integrity in our connection, all of these things that make it um, easier to channel, easier to connect, but more importantly, that you're connecting with the highest vibrational being, so your guides rather than um, energies that might pose as your guides. And the higher your vibration is, the easier it's gonna to be to connect with the right energies to do the work and to do, um, to get the clear uh, insights that will help you, whether it's interpreting a dream or just understanding, you know, what, what's gonna serve my highest good. So clearing Absolutely. the vibration is so a if very you're trying important to make, aspect. Yeah, if you're trying to, uh, answer a question or make an important decision it's really good to clear yourself before you make that important decision too so it's it's practical for so many things and there was a lot kind of baked into your answer um, that might slip by so I want to tease it out uh, you kept go you were talking about connecting to the highest source um, so are you saying that if I am not in the right state of mind or in the right vibrational state I can be connected to a source that I really don't want to hear an answer from. Um, yeah. Absolutely. Are you nodding? It's, it's akin, the way, the analogy I use is you can fly at 10,000 feet where all the small airplanes fly, but the higher you raise your vibration, you're up where there's 
very little traffic and you know that the planes that are up there they they have purpose they're not just just having a good time a good fly you know those planes they have they have a destination they're on a schedule they know what they're doing and i i just connect that with a higher purpose a higher intent um higher vibration and so you want to get out of the the high traffic areas at the low altitude the higher you go the more likely you're going to connect with the right energies that will actually guide you and not just take advantage of the fact that you can connect. Yeah, because there are a lot of spirits or entities that just play with you and give you answers if, if they think um, it's going to be fun. And some have other uh, purposes for doing that too. So yeah. clearing yourself, raising your vibration avoids all of that. Um, yes. And it, it adds to the accuracy. That's probably the one of the easiest ways to think about it, it adds to the accuracy of the information you get um, because you can connect to spirits that don't have the answer and you think that just because I'm connected, I'm connected to a, an intelligent being. They're not necessarily intelligent. No. So you want to aim for the intelligent ones because the other ones will still give you an answer because they want to have the conversation. Yeah. Uh, but their, their answer is just as likely to be correct as the conjured up answer you could give yourself. Exactly. Um, and so during the course, we'll give strategies on how to discern whether or not you're connected with a higher vibrational being or not. So lots of good stuff. And so I've seen a part of your course material. It's jam packed uh, with tips. Like you've really condensed um, all the things that you can do to help improve your vibrational state into very practical tips. Here's what you can do for this. Here's what you can do here and so on and so on. And then you said you, you studied this for a year and I'm asking you to teach it in three weeks, but then there's five, it's followed by six weeks of practice. Um, yeah. So it's really three months, a, a, a year down to three months. Um, but the goal is that you get a good enough connection so that you can validate the analysis of your dreams. So that's why it's like you we're not saying, hey, you can quit your job and put up a, a slate outside saying you're able to channel. Um, you probably will be able to do that. But the goal of the course is to get it to where you get, you're definitely good enough to where you can check that the analysis of your your dream is accurate yeah. and i don't know if you saw i released video three of my series on friday yes and oh yes i i compared the vibrational state to imagine that you're going on a date with somebody that you love you have to add that in. i love that and analogy so, that was so good <laughs> and so as you're going on that date as you're heading out on the date to meet your special someone your vibration is rising your your uh, anticipation is really high your body tingles. You're just really looking forward to this. There's nowhere else you'd rather be. That's the state you want to get into because when you channel or, or try to channel, you connect to spirits who match your vibrational state and your guides exactly. are going to embody love. So if you can get into that loving state, then you've, you've put yourself, like you said, above the, the, the small airplanes. You're up at the high level and it's, that's the only ones you're going to connect up there because that's the only ones that right. fly in that space. And then the opposite is, if you try to channel in a negative space, like if you're expecting to get chewed down by your boss and you're called into the office, you don't want to channel in that space. And a lot of the importance is knowing which state you're in and maybe giving yourself time to get out of that state if need be. But you have practical tips. You can hang that energy yes. on a coat hook and uh, get into a really positive state, channel, and then pick that up if you want afterwards. But usually you Absolutely. don't want to connect to your guys. <laughs> You probably won't want to pick it up, but yeah, you can definitely, there are ways to put all of that on pause to raise your vibration in the moment. Yeah. And we're going to be talking about all of it. It's going to be an amazing course and, and practical, not just for dream interpretation, which will change your life. Just being able to interpret your dreams and understand them and even to help your friends or your loved ones to interpret theirs is an amazing thing. Um, but it will help in, in so many aspects of your life just to understand um, your own connection and uh, your ability to connect when you need to. And um, also just feeling the, what it is to have um, your guides right there with you. Like my, I'm constantly talking to my guides and this, it wasn't an easy thing. It took years to develop the ability to dialogue with them at, an, at a moment's notice, but we will give you all the practical tips, the same one I used to get to where I am. So it's going to be and fun. And we do have, so after the first three weeks, other people get involved. So there'll actually be five people working 
uh, the room each time. So Jackie yes. will be leading everything. Uh, I'll, be, I'll be involved, but there'll also be Heidi Brook and uh, Elizabeth Rose, uh, two other channeling teachers. They'll be working Amazing with people. Amazing channelers. Uh, and then Sandy will be holding the sacred space, which we will talk about on the call, but it saves you having to do a lot of work when you've got somebody who can do that. Um, yes. because they'll raise your vibration for you. So you can come in in a really terrible state of mind and go, oh, yeah, I'm feeling really rotten. I'm be careful of how mm -hmm. I talk on the radio here. Um, <laughs> and it won't matter because this person will make sure you can only connect to who we, uh, you need to connect to. But yeah, I'm really looking forward to it, especially because this is the inaugural run uh, of it. And, uh, and we've planned this for so long. <laughs> yes, for a long time. And it's, and it's finally here. It's I'm sorry that awesome. I'm pushing it out another week because um, the, the videos haven't come, the last one hasn't come back, back from the editor yet. I thought I was going to get it yesterday or Friday. And so, um, yeah, it's, it's going to, so it's going to start on the 21st. Uh, apologies for that. Um, but no, there's already you know people. What? It's perfect because the solstice. Yeah. Is it? Good energy. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I'm going to pretend I knew that. See, that's perfect. <laughs> <laughs> that's okay. Your guide's new. It's perfect. <laughs> All right, Jackie. Thanks for taking the time to talk to us. And uh, maybe we'll have you in again during the course um, to, Great. to give some feedback. I can't wait. Thank you so All much, right. Michael. Take care. Bye. So I recorded that earlier and I take it back. Uh, Jackie didn't give away any details about how she's going to help you raise your vibration. But trust me, she has a lot of techniques that she's going to cover. Um, and, uh, you know, it's so it's very pragmatic. How do I do this? How do like, what are the steps I need to take to raise my vibration to, to clear myself, to ground myself to all the various different things to, to get to the state where you can connect with your guides. So anyway, let's move on and let's have a look at some of the dreams I got in. Uh, and it's the second dream is the one that really triggered me to talk to Jackie. But uh, here's the first one. This is from Deb. She says, I'm working at breaking through to my next level with channeling and asking for guidance. And I finally remember my dream, which I think holds some answers if I can unlock the meaning. Well, that's obviously always true. Your dreams are going to hold answers. Um, but uh, what are they going to be about? Are they about, <laughs> is it about the channeling or not? Fingers crossed for you. Well, we already know because I said it is. Whatever help you can offer, I would very much appreciate. And she calls it frizzy hair and two gifts. So the two gifts tell us straight away it's channeling because two is a number that comes up for channels all the time because it requires male and female energy working in harmony. And uh, that harmony is often shown up as the number two in dreams. It's also about dialogue, which requires two people um, and so on. I say people kind of loosely. Anyway, here's the dream. She says, I'm attending a dinner and as I'm getting ready to go, I notice that my hair is very long. Uh, and she says, I've been trying to grow it and I'm quite proud of it. But there's a lot of static electricity that is making it stand up. OK, so she's attending a dinner and getting ready to go. So when you're trying to do something and you're trying to get to a place uh, with the channeling and then you have a dream that says, hey, here's a dinner that you're going to go to and attend. It's an event uh, that you arrive at. Um, we know it's an analogy to you arriving at the space where your channeling is perfect. Um, so that's really good. We know it because of the two gifts too. But uh, you say you notice that your hair is very long. You've been trying to grow it and that's good. Um, and the reason it shows up in your dream is because you're trying to grow it. But it also tells us that you get connection through thoughts. Uh, the static electricity is going to raise your hair up, like you said in, in the dream. And so it's literally in the dream, your thoughts are raised up. Uh, they're reaching up to the ceiling and that's symbolic of uh, your guides connecting with you and raising your thoughts. So uh, for some people, that's how it works. In my last video, I talked about nine different ways of channeling and getting thoughts impressed on your mind is one of the ways of channeling. Now, you need to know what way it works for you because there's no point you practicing any method that doesn't work for you because that's it's just not going to work. Uh, so you need to know how it's going to work for me. Am I a channel? What is my method? Or some people have a few methods, but what are they? And only practice those because you're not going to get anything else uh, by, by doing it a different way. Um, so this is good. Uh, how do you know that your guides are giving you the information? That's that's the thing. Uh, or how do I know I'm not making something up in my own mind? And that's given by the fact that the hair is raised up. So when your guides connect to you and they give you information, 
you're going to feel a positive uplift from that thought. It's like a thought that includes a solution. You know, when you have that light bulb moment and you go, ah, I know what I need to do here. The information that comes from them has that feeling with it, uh, that it's like, oh, this is the answer. I, I'm not uh, ruminating on it and like working myself into a fit. I've got a solution with the thought. And so it's very easy to tell the difference. Um, but of course, if you don't know that they, that's how they connect with you, you won't notice those thoughts in any different way from other ones. So when you do know that's your method and you can find, uh, you can practice spotting the thoughts that they give you as opposed to your own, uh, then you're, you're away. Uh, it's perfect. Um, so what else have we got in the dream? I stopped at a part. You said, uh, I get up, you say you're proud. That's really good. So I mean, well, it's saying that you want to give readings that you're proud of. Okay, fair enough. Now, when we're learning something, um, we have to allow that we're going to make mistakes. And even with channeling, uh, even with dream interpretation, like I know, for instance, if I get a dream wrong, I can come back to it. Or even if it's live on the air and I say, hey, your dream means this, my guides will still tell me later on if, I've, if I got something wrong on it. And there'll be a niggling uh, feeling that won't go away. And I can contact the person and say, you know, I got more information. This is much more important than the other information I gave you. And so realize that you can do that with, with anything, with any gift that you have, um, you know, where you're helping another person. Usually it's in the moment. Uh, so if you say something and it's wrong, you'll know straight away and you'll be pulled back a bit and you go, oh, hang on, no, wait, that's not exactly right. It's this. And you'll go back into the flow of it. So um, don't try to be too proud is what I'm getting at. Um, because then you're just like, I want to be perfect. So I want to paint the equivalent of the Sistine Chapel with the first paintbrush I ever buy. You know, you're not going to do that. You're, you're going to get better as you practice the gift. Um, and then you say, I get to the dinner and I'm given two gifts. Perfect. So uh, that's how we know that the dinner is about you arriving at the gift, uh, using your gift of channeling. Um, being given a gift in a dream is, is says that you have this gift too, which is perfect. Uh, the first is a large bottle of bright pink nail polish. And the next is the same shape bottle, but blue with a pink center. But I can't make out what it is. I see that the spray nozzle is missing and it's a bottle of perfume, which smells nice. Um, so this dream, um, the bright pink, being given the gift of bright pink, actually tells us that you're a counselor um, because it's given as a gift. Uh, you wouldn't always say that about pink in a dream, but because a guide gave it to you, it says that you have the ability to have an open and compassionate heart, which is a prerequisite for counseling. So you've got the counseling gift. Um, but what else does it say? It asks you to appreciate your femininity. Uh, and um, when, like put it on display, because you put it's nail polish. So, so appreciate your femininity and put it on display for others to see. And uh, when I talked to Deb just before the show about this dream, she said, yeah, well, normally I'm okay, but right now I'm not because I've put on a bit of weight and um, I'm not happy with that. So, and she said, but normally I would be okay with that. Um, now, your normal might not be the normal that the dream is talking about. It's still kind of saying, look, really put yourself out there. Appreciate that um, as a woman with your, your perspective on life, uh, everything that comes with uh, being a woman uh, and how you communicate, how you express, etc. And how open you are to um, allowing other people be who they are. Um, that is, is all part of your femininity. And, um, and appreciate that as you're using your gift. Um, that's what it's saying to do. With, and, and also like put yourself out there. And then the second one um is blue with a pink center. So blue is about uh, expressing yourself. It's the color of the throat chakra. It's about spiritual expression, really. Um, I always say it's philosophy of life. It's that too. So with the pink center, it's to say, look, that your, um, your ability to have unconditional love is part of who you are. And you need to express that because it's, it's a, a perfume bottle that you spray, but the spray nozzle is missing. So you're not expressing that as, as part of who you are. Um, so you hold back, you need to fix it. Uh, there's more I could say about that, but that's, that's good enough. Um, also there is the element of course, with it being nails, uh, nails, teeth and nails and dreams often have to do with raising children. And when I asked Deb about that, she said, no, I'm too selfish. I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't have a child. 
even though she went through a period of life where she, period in her life where she was happy to have a child you know if that had happened um so that's something else that you've got to work on it's not big um it's really about the femininity uh, but the other part is there and it comes up because um and we see in the next part of the dream you were jehovah witness uh, and you were your parents you said were the kind that like the woman raises the children so it's kind of a something that you end up having to do because it's it's a let's say norm in air quotes that is uh, put on you it's like it's this is your job even though it isn't your job and that's kind of put you off so fix that uh, fix your attitude towards that type of thing because it holds you back um, and then the last part I think this is a work dinner because I think the man I'm speaking to is my boss and I'm explaining to him why I'm taking the next three days off and it's so I can attend the three-day convention for Jehovah's Witnesses in Waking Life I used to be one but have left so the three tells you to commit to this ahead of other work because you're you're telling your boss you're going for three days um, and really this is part uh, this part is about getting out from under the thumb of other things uh, and that must be a trigger for you feeling trapped into something you don't want to be doing uh, the channeling work must feel like uh to you like you have broken into a convention uh, and that you have figured it out and i had kind of worded it other ways but my guides kept correcting me saying no it has to be worded this way for for deb the breaking into the convention which is kind of a funny rather than arriving at a convention uh so um so that's really important um you're in the club of channelers uh you've met the criteria and that's what you you need to accept um and then you had a few questions here are my questions what is the long hair with static about we covered that why does broken what does a broken perfume bottle mean we covered that pink says i'm to work with mother issues but i thought i had worked through them and yes you have uh, so it's not really about that it's about you having the gift of, of counseling and so that's when you're channeling that gift's going to work with your channeling alongside it uh, so you will automatically instinctively be brilliant at conveying the information that you get um, you will be able to be empathic to understand how to pass it on without hurting the other person and and realizing and seizing on opportunities for when somebody is open and not doing it when they're not open that all comes with the counseling gift and you say this is not the first dream about being a jehovah's witness again why do i keep getting them and you keep getting them because you were one and you had to get out of it um, and it's a bit like uh, me being raised a strong catholic in a very strong catholic country it took me years to overcome that um, and I did research and research and I basically had to prove to myself that the Catholic Church wasn't in it for the spiritual reasons and so I, I did lots of research and I'm, I, of course a lot of priests are in it for that for that spiritual reasons and so on um, but this is what I had to do uh, to get out of it because really these religions will tell you that if you try to talk to God then you're really talking to Satan, you're going to uh, go to hell for the rest of your life, etc, etc. Now, as an adult, if I told you about a religion and you're brought into it as an adult, it's easy for you to get out of it as an adult. But if you're brought in at the age zero and all the way up through childhood, it's it's baked into your subconscious. And that's a very different thing to get rid of and, and overcome. And so what I had to, the big things that got me past it was realizing that they moved the holy day from saturday to sunday even though that's a commandment to keep it on the saturday and then moving the birth of jesus from january 6th to december 25th and then um taking uh, reincarnation out of the bible so there were three that was enough for me but that was at the end of of like three or more years of of uh painstaking uh grappling with it anyway let's move on let's have a look at uh, sasha's dream she says here are my dreams i thought you might like a couple of them they're interesting i keep getting the message in waking life that i need to listen to myself not anyone else not channels really know and accept myself and i think i'm finally taking that to heart before having these dreams uh, i kept thinking that listening to myself is the biggest lesson i received from something that recently happened okay so here's the thing your guides will never ever tell you to only listen to yourself i've seen this happen before um your guides for instance they're not you so they will never tell you don't listen to anybody else because 
they're not you for a start. And there are lots of people in the world that can help you. There are lots of people that you shouldn't listen to. So typically what guides will do is they will say, don't listen to this individual. They're very specific. They don't give a blanket. Don't listen to anyone else. Only listen to yourself. That to me would make me very suspect. Uh, if, if you got that information through channeling, I would be very suspect of the guide who passed that on. I would wonder whether they're a guide because I've seen this before a number of times. And um, what I would do just to prove it is I would do a clearing like Jackie was talking about at the start, which is why I got her involved here. Uh, I would do a clearing. And if that guide is still around after the clearing, perfect, then everything's good um, because a clearing won't clear your guides, um, but it will clear any negative uh, spirit that's around that's pretending to have all the answers and saying, don't listen to anybody else. Um, and this is a method that uh, some spirits will use to kind of like um, break you away from your circle of friends uh, so that you only get your information from them. And, and then they, you know, you're kind of trapped with them for a while until you realize, hey, this was a mistake. I'm not saying that's the case for you, uh, because it may very well be that you need to do something that is an idea of yours and somebody's knocking you down. But like I said, guides will be specific and they will say, don't listen to this person. Sometimes it'll be, don't listen to this person about this thing. But let's have a look at your dream. Uh, I was at the head of a long table. There were two men sitting next to me. They were not at the head, they were at the side, okay? At least one of them, if not both, had swimming goggles around their head. One pair of goggles was blue and white and the other one was red and white. The colors are really good. Uh, it is about channeling because we have two swimmers and swimmers uh, work in the water. That's their career, let's say. So um, this is about your channeling career or your spiritual career. Um, red and white tells you to have confidence in that ability, in your abilities. That's great. And blue and white is is almost as good. Like red and white's the best color combination and blue and white is super good. It tells you to have really positive philosophy of life with regard to it. Now, real quick, because I'm looking at the time. Uh, the table and the head of the table, and you say that the white was actually kind of a milky plastic white, says that the food you eat affects your ability to channel because it affects your brain. So be aware of that. Um, I have to be aware of that one myself. Uh, I, there's certain foods I just can't eat uh, if I want to work. Um, and then your next dream I'm going to do real fast. There are two naked women. One had cesarean section scar. The other was slouching and her stomach was not visible. But when she sat up, she also had a cesarean section scar. So Caesar, of course, is a leader. Uh, that's where that comes from. Uh, and it says you're a spiritual leader. So when we put that uh, with your other dream, your spiritual leadership is a skill uh, that you have and you're also meant to rely on and have uh, think of very positively because of the blue and white and, and really have faith and confidence in that. Obviously, there's the reference to channeling with the two of them. And also they're naked, which is about you not being afraid to be yourself, uh, but you see it as a scar. So obviously uh, it's something you hold back on or try to hide. That's it. That's my show for this week. Until next week, I'm Michael Sheridan. 